To say that development goals are important is, uh, I think, not the same thing as uh, that is what the world needs or that uh, uh, an important uh, uh, sort of uh, um, concept is necessarily a good concept. So it is not to say that the development goals have not been good, but it doesn't mean that the goals we set for tomorrow are necessarily going to be good automatically because the past goals have been partially uh, uh, bene beneficial. It's extremely important. We are not hijacked along the development journey by goals. And this brings me to the second question, uh, what is wrong with them? And the implicit in this is my, is my critique, which is that uh, what's wrong with them is who set them? Uh, I mean, you know, who were the, uh, the technocrats? The, uh, uh, and at that time, I was in DFID and, uh, uh, you know, with the previous generation of the, of the British government and uh, very much involved in setting them. And uh, now, as we look back on them, I think the greatest critique of them is, uh, who are this bunch of do-gooders who, sitting together, uh, uh, said to the world, yes, you know, your children will go to school, you will have so many liters of water, uh, you will uh, uh, wear a condom and protect yourself against malaria, and you will uh, swelter under uh, bed nets, and you will do this, that, uh, and the other. Uh, and that's what's wrong with them, that they are goals which are well meant but they are, I would not call them global goals in any sense of the term because they don't reflect uh, anyone's aspirations other than uh, liberal do-gooders. Uh, I hope many of them are here in this audience. As we contemplate the world after 2015 um, and we talk about either replacing or updating the MDGs, are we likely to get more or less than we did in the year 2000? Is the world more ready to compromise or less? I fear less, and I'm bleeding into your subsequent two questions here. Um, I'm not an MDG expert. I'm not a development expert. Um, uh, Maureen and uh, Mukesh are, and uh, I very much look forward to their much more intelligent uh, analysis of what the MDGs are and are not. Uh, I find the MDGs vitally important to explain the development business. Um, uh, development is under a lot of attack these days. Um, uh, as the financial crisis bites, as uh, uh, treasuries are looking for ways to save money, as uh, militaries and foreign ministries um, are uh, wanting to concentrate available resources to accomplish their geostrategic aims, uh, development tends to get caught in the middle and suffer. Um, so the MDGs help defend the development vocation, and I think that is vital. And I also believe it is extremely important and timely that we get good at defending the development vocation. I think it's a myth that development assistance doesn't work, that transfer of resources does not work. It doesn't always work. I mean, do we as individuals always spend money on the right things? Probably not. But I would be much, much more uh, on, on the side of Bob in terms of underlining the importance of continuing that flow of resources. I'm still trying to figure out how, how, uh, how, how, how Mukesh's vision, which strikes me as kind of California in the 60s, but for how, people how you worldwide. Eat, how, you eat, how you eat hope. How you, uh, yeah. how you eat hope. I'm still much more on the side of the, of the benefits of, um, of actually sharing income. I'm, I, I think that people have a lot more hope when they have uh, food than when they don't. Um, so I think it's a big myth that development, that development assistance does not work. I think we've got endless, uh, endless uh, studies, statistics, et cetera, that shows that it does make a, different in, a difference in people's lives. Uh, I mean, uh, and, and in, for people who really want to follow this up, you can go on the website of the Overseas Development Institute in the UK and look at the long list of changes that have occurred assisted by global investments from other countries uh, directed towards uh, problems of... Uh, of um, well, a whole range of problems, whether, whether we're talking about uh, maternal and child health, whether we're talking about immunization rates, whether we're talking about, you know, you can make fun of mosquito nets, but in fact, the impact of uh, bed nets is well demonstrated 
on, child, on malaria, particularly for children. So I think it's a big myth that development assistance doesn't work. I think it makes it really easy to discount the need for sharing between people and between countries. It's very easy to say, this, this doesn't make any sense, uh, it's only a waste of money. And while I agree with Bob that, we, uh, that we're learning more all the time about how to have effective development partnerships and how to make decisions about where that money goes, to deny that additional resources can be useful, I think, is just a way of excusing ourselves uh, and saying it doesn't matter, they can't do it, and let's just leave it up to them in their kind of happy, hopeful circles that Mukesh is talking about. Africa is the only, Africa, the, the billionth African was born a year ago. Uh, Africa is the only part of the world that collectively is getting worse. The only part of the world where the gap between them and us is widening. There are other parts of the world where it is not narrowing fast, there are, and parts of the world where it is narrowing dramatically quickly. But in Africa, it's widening. It is perfectly possible that uh, the 53 countries of Africa taken collectively, the billion people of Africa, will not meet any of the development goals collectively. Not one of them. Um, individual countries will meet a number of, of MDGs, but collectively we're facing a dramatic failure. Um, the head of the World Bank said the other day we should abolish the term third world um, um, because um, all parts of the world are becoming so much closer together so quickly um, uh, that such terms are uh, anachronistic. Uh, it, it, with respect to Africa, this is nonsense. But he points out to uh, African growth at 6%. 6% of nothing isn't much. Um, uh, and the reality of Africa today is simply appalling in most uh, definitions. Some of the numbers that we've seen up here um, before we started tell a happy story and certainly help me explain why development is important and particularly development is important for Africa because development at the margin can make a difference with countries willing to walk that talk, willing to make a difference. I think we should be extremely harsh in our triage, particularly in Africa. We should work with countries that do walk that talk, that do govern reasonably and adequately, and we should drop the countries that don't because, because we don't have enough to go around. That the, the $120 billion we have to spend on development is almost exactly the amount that West Germany decided to spend on making then 18, now 13 million East Germans feel more German. The same amount of money. Uh, and by the way, they haven't succeeded over in 25 years in making the East Germans feel comfortable about being German. And we're, we're trying to make use that same amount of money to make five billion people more comfortable, or one billion Africans. It isn't nearly enough, so we should concentrate it where um, the leadership, political leadership, <coughs> is present and we can make a difference, and we should build fences around um, uh, the, the, the money we're prepared to give to a dramatically deteriorating security, security situations, AKA failed states, and we, yes, even we should build fences around the amount of money we're prepared to give for humanitarian assistance. Otherwise, there won't be any left for development. I, I think today, the reality is that the world's poorest peoples, definitely they're living in Africa, but if you add up the numbers, the world's poorest uh, populations are living in the rich and the middle income countries. So India, unfortunately India, my uh, beloved country of, uh, of birth, has, uh, has the reputation of actually, uh, it might be a brick star and going places, but it is also a host to the most abject uh, and poor people of the world, greater than in Africa. Now this is not to set up Africa versus the rest of the world, uh, world, uh, uh, world debate. Uh, I think solidarity uh, has to extend to uh, you know, all vulnerable and, and poor people, wherever they might be based. But what it shows is that poverty 
is no longer an issue of developed countries and developing countries. Here in Canada, I hear in the short two days I've spent here, the object conditions in which your Aborigines and other people uh, in, the, in, the, uh, the, in the substratum of Canadian society live. That's why I worry as much about poor Canadians as I might want to worry about poor Indians or poor Africans. And unless we think in those global terms, unless we build that global solidarity which overcomes our national pride of being a donor and a, and a receiver, we will not make a progress towards a world that I dream of. I wasn't in California uh, uh, in the 1960s, but come to think of it, it's actually not a bad dream. And, and if it worked for California, at least for some time, why deny the rest of the world that opportunity also? And dreams are very important. In the end, if you can't help people, uh, everyone, every time, everywhere, don't take away their dreams and hopes. How do we make sure the poorest people benefit? Well, probably the easiest way is by transferring money directly to them. Uh, Brazil has been hugely successful with the Bolsa Família, which is effectively a social assistance program that does have some caveats. Uh, children have to go to school and they have to be immunized. But that is the most effective way of dealing with the poorest people. Bernard Kushner was pushing uh, global social security a few years ago, and I'm very sorry that it sort of dropped off the map, because I think that we should be seriously costing that out uh, in some countries because one can argue the same way that remittances matter a lot, where the money goes into the hands, not necessarily of the poorest people because it's usually families who've been able to educate someone who could go off, but I'd argue that some of those workers in, uh, in the Middle East who come from Kerala are from very poor families, and there's an example of the money is going directly to them. So I think Look at, uh, look at programs like the Bolsa Familia in Brazil, transfer the money, look for ways to transfer the money directly. That's what we do here for the poorest people. You cannot divorce aid policies from wider uh, policies in the, in, in, in the country. You can't, for example, uh, have a, uh, a health policy going in one direction, education policy going in another direction, and social welfare policy going in another direction, because they contradict each other. This policy coherence and taking consistent approach uh, is extremely <clears throat> important. Uh, and we see this time and time again when incoherence comes in, and either the quality of the aid uh, has, a, uh, has, a, has impact which you don't want, uh, or in fact has perverse impacts. And that's true, I think, domestically, uh, and as it would be for uh, overseas uh, aid for any country. We haven't appreciated, we haven't encaissé, we haven't uh, absorbed the extent to which the development business is, is a long-term commitment. Uh, we, we increasingly, in our attention deficit adult <coughs> politics, want fast returns. And, and, and to some extent, the MDGs exacerbate that problem. Um, because um, development has fallen somewhat out of vogue, despite the very good numbers. Um, uh, Oxford policy management estimates that 70 to 85 percent of all discrete development projects achieve their objectives. Um, despite that, uh, uh, we, want, we want quantifiable early returns. Um, and we know, we know in our heart that doesn't usually work. But nevertheless, in order to satisfy the beast, be it, be it the newspapers, be it, be it the auditor, uh, be it the need for the development minister to stand up and say, Eureka, um, uh, we go for the easy wins. Um, Jeff Sachs has helped us a lot in that regard too. And to the extent that, that the, we, we move towards quantifiable MDGs, we are exacerbating that trend. M M Mukesh suggested earlier very accurately, it's, uh, we all want to tell you how many more kids are in school than was the case last year. We're not asking how many kids are in each classroom. And it's terrific that uh, I, I saw one classroom in northern Uganda where there was one 19-year-old teacher teaching 338 kids in one class. By the way, it was a better behaved class than any class I've seen in Canada, but nevertheless, it's pretty hard to teach 338 kids at the same time. But the MDGs lead you down that path, and we have to be worried about that.
uh, that is what the world needs or that uh, uh, an important uh, uh, sort of uh, um, concept is necessarily a good concept. So it is not to say that the development goals have not been good, but it doesn't mean that the goals we set for tomorrow are necessarily going to be good automatically because the past goals. In, you know, who were the, uh, the technocrats? The, uh, uh, and at that time, I was in DFID and uh, uh, you know, with the previous generation of the, of the British government and uh, very much involved in setting them. And uh, now, as we look back on them, I think the greatest critique of them is, uh, who are these bunch of do-gooders who have been partially uh, 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 bene beneficial? It's extremely important. We are not hijacked along the development journey by goals. And this brings us to the second question, uh, what is wrong with them? And the implicit in this is my, is my critique, which is that uh, what's wrong with them is who set them? Uh, sitting together, uh, uh, said to the world, yes, you know, your children will go to school, you will have so many liters of water, uh, you will uh, uh, wear a condom and protect yourself against malaria, and you will uh, swelter under uh, bed nets, and you will do this, that, uh, and the other. Uh, and that's what's wrong with them, that they are goals. To say that development goals are important is, uh, I think, not the same thing as